Uh, do you hear me well? Do you hear me well? Hello, namaste, satnam. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Helen Lavretsky. I'm a professor of psychiatry at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. And um, I am an integrative psychiatrist. I study the effects of uh, yoga, uh, meditation, and tai chi uh, in older adults, in stressed caregivers, and older adults who have depression or have uh, cognitive decline memory problems. Um, I started doing this type of work about 12 years ago, following my own passion in Kundalini Yoga. I'm a uh, trained Kundalini Yoga teacher and use it for research purposes. And so in my own practice, I noticed uh, significant um, health effects of uh, yoga practice on immune system, on cognition, on mood. Uh, philosophy of life, of course, changed. And so I pursued it in older adults who are nearing the end of their lives, and it's their uh, last chapter. It could be very, very stressful. My first study was in um, stress dementia caregivers, uh, family members who were taking care of their family members with dementia. 
And uh, the problem for caregivers is that they're very, very busy. They have jobs, they have children to take care of, and parents typically, or spouses who have dementia. So they don't have a lot of time to spend on yoga practices. So we started with a beautiful Kundalini Yoga um, uh, uh, Kriya, uh, Kirtan Kriya. And um, the duration of this Kriya was 11 minutes. It could be also performed uh, for longer periods of time, like 31 and 62 minutes. Um, I will demonstrate this Kriya to you. Uh, it is uh, historically used for aging, uh, problems of aging and cogni cognitive aging in older adults in India. And it was adopted uh, by uh, the sponsors uh, who uh, sponsored the study, uh, Alzheimer's Research and Prevention Foundation, um, who are devoted to studying the effects of this Kriya for uh, cognition in older adults. So uh, I will demonstrate a, an abbreviated version of the Kriya. Um, the, in, the, in the original version, it's an 11 minute Kriya, two minutes chanting out loud, uh, then whispering for two minutes, then silent chanting uh, for three minutes, then chanting uh, uh, whisper and then coming out of out loud. Uh, the mantra is Sata Nama. Um, and uh, uh, we use mudras. Sata Nama, Sata Nama. Eyes are closed and focused on the third eye point. And uh, uh, we imagine white light coming through the center of the head, going through the center of the head and coming out uh, at the brow point. So it's going L shape. We, give instructions to imagine a flow of a bright white light through the center of the head and coming at the brow point. So it's a multitasking Kriya. And that's very important to know because we actually see those changes in the brain. Um, so I'll, I'll just do a brief uh, chant so that you get a sense of it. Sata Nama, Sata Nama, Satanama, Satanama, whisper. Satanama, 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 Satanama. Silent. Satanama, 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 Satanama. And shake, shake, shake because you actually uh, develop a lot of energy in your fingers uh, through the mudra. So you feel kind of electric. Uh, electric shocks in your uh, tips of the fingers, so it's recommended that you shake for the last minute. Um, so uh, they were gladly performing this uh, Kriya. Uh, people uh, generally, the caregivers generally, uh, did not know anything about Kundalini Yoga or uh, Kirtan Kriya prior to participation. And uh, we recruited uh, 39 uh, caregivers participants and randomize them to receive uh, this uh, Kriya um, uh, as a homework. And uh, the control was uh, just passive listening to the music, relaxation. We asked them to go uh, in, a, in a quiet room, uh, darkened pl place, listen to instrumental music. We gave them uh, standardized CDs and they were just relaxing and listening to the music for the same duration of time, uh, 11 minutes. And it continued for uh, eight weeks. And so in the end, uh, the differences were quite pronounced. 
and we uh, found that uh, caregivers who pra were practicing the skriya uh, were less stressed, uh, had less depression and anxiety, less head stress, improved their resilience, improve, improved their cognition, but also uh, their cognition improved, which was unexpected uh, prior to the study. And, you know, yoga was not considered, or yogic meditations were not considered as a cognitive enhancement here in the West. Uh, of course, uh, in India, many kriyas are used to improve cognition. So this was uh, quite different, uh, and uh, we actually pursued this in uh, later studies. In the same study of caregivers, we also measured telomerase, which is a biomarker of cellular aging, and demonstrated that the meditators uh, increased telomerase uh, levels. And telomerase is responsible for maintaining uh, lengths of telomeres in the end of the chromosomes that are uh, markers of aging or stress. So uh, this was one of the very few uh, first uh, studies demonstrating anti-aging effects of yoga. So once I uh, knew the results, I went to my yoga teachers and I, I said, now I can prove that yogis don't get old. <laughs> and uh, so uh, then we also looked at the brain and the brain rewires during this practicing. As I said, it's a multitasking practice. The attention goes to the chanting, to the visualization of light, uh, uh, focusing on, on the uh, third eye point, on a brow point, and then uh, pressing fingers in mudra, and that's a multitasking effect. We saw the differences, the group differences were in right inferior frontal lobe, which is responsible for multitasking and complex decision uh, making or executive function. And uh, visualization also uh, resulted in activation of right visual cortex um, uh, that over time, if you do repeat any kind of action, uh, it serves as an exercise of a particular lobe that is responsible for uh, this function. So uh, this was one of the first studies of its kind that established biomarkers of response uh, to yoga and meditation that followed with uh, multiple other studies, similar design. Also, we found that 64 genes uh, changed their expression as a result of uh, uh, practicing this uh, Kirtan Kriya. And mostly the genes that are responsible for uh, inflammation were suppressed. Uh, and uh, the genes that were responsible for antiviral response, which is protective response, which is very relevant to COVID uh, response, antiviral response, uh, were activated, upregulated. 19 genes responsible for antiviral response, interferon-related pathway. Um, so, uh, so this uh, Kriya is very uh, simple to do, and uh, many of the participants who never experienced anything like this said that it was very enjoyable, um, very relaxing. They tended to do it in the end of the day, and it helped them relax and sleep better as well. Um, uh, so that had very prominent physiological effects. Uh, the brain rewired um, uh, frontal aspects of the brain, and also in the salience um, network, um, uh, the activation and connectivity improved in the meditation compared to the control group. Uh, which is consistent with other studies of meditation that improve self-awareness uh, or salience. Um, and uh, uh, this in includes uh, anterior cingulate and uh, insular uh, cortex. So that was like a, a beautiful little study that resulted in a follow-up study in older adults with mild cognitive impairment and uh, those um, with mild cognitive impairment were recruited and randomized to receive uh, kundalini yoga practice. So these people were more prepared to come to the site and uh, practice uh, yoga for uh, an hour, 15 minutes, uh, once a week uh, for 12 weeks. And they also performed kirtan kriya, same kirtan kriya at home as a homework. The control group was randomized to receive memory training, uh, which is um, a golden uh, form of golden golden standard form of uh, treatment or uh, or or training for mild cognitive impairment in older adults. 
So that uh, uh, training was um, developed in the UCLA Longevity Center and uh, has been tested in other uh, studies of mild cognitive impairment. So uh, this was a longer study. We followed them for six months to see if this uh, yoga practices result, would result in sustained cognitive benefit. And indeed what we found that yoga had uh, memory training did what it, it's designed to do, which is improve memory. But yoga uh, improved memory to the same degree as memory training. And again, yoga is not considered the memory training exercise, but it d did, did uh, have the same benefits. Also, it improved uh, resilience, uh, mental health, depressive symptoms, and uh, had broader effects. Uh, both practices rewired the brain to uh, a default mode network connectivity improved and it was uh, associated with improvement in verbal uh, memory performance. And verbal memory is one of the first things to be affected by cognitive decline in older adults that would potentially lead to the de development of Alzheimer's and uh, Alzheimer's dementia. Uh, so, um, also we found that uh, yoga versus memory training resulted in chemical changes in the brain uh, with increase in choline uh, concentration in hippocampus. Hippocampus is a uh, uh, structure in the brain that is responsible for memory and emotional uh, response. Um, a, the memory training resulted in increased uh, size of hippocampus, which is, has been shown before. Uh, but did not was not associated with any other chemical changes in the brain compared to yoga. So therefore, yoga provided cognitive benefit, but also had this broader effect on mental health. Um, we're currently following this study with a study in um, younger uh, in in older women, 50 plus, with cardiovascular risk factors. Um, who also complain of memory uh, uh, decline. And uh, so uh, the study is still ongoing, but we are also examining, which has not really been done uh, before in uh, their narrative of change, how uh, yoga practice changes their philosophy of life. For example, many caregivers uh, discovered that um, they were too hard on themselves. They never had time for themselves. And this uh, pause, this uh, time to themselves, 20 minutes to themselves, made a huge difference. And so after the study was done, they made commitment to their own evolution, uh, their own um, uh, well-being by having time, scheduling time to uh, meditate and practice uh, yoga um, and also just be by themselves and pay attention to their own well-being and health. So, uh, and for that reason, we also wanted to know how yoga practice not only uh, changes biology of the brain, biology of the body, stress response, uh, but also philosophy and how that shifts how um, health paradigm in a particular individual. And that's uh, certainly very important for older adults who, besides uh, cognitive problems or mood problems, also have comorbid uh, medical problems and financial problems. So overall, uh, especially nowadays during this COVID uh, pandemic where older adults are at higher risk, highest risk for mortality and morbidity, uh, it's very important to um, uh, show them these results, but also train them to self-regulate, center themselves, and um, uh, inform them that uh, fear and anxiety are counterproductive, and uh, things like uh, very simple meditations and practices can make such dramatic shifts in their physiology that would, it would reduce uh, stress response improve their brain function, improve their immune function, uh, promote antiviral uh, capabilities of the immune system uh, by boosting this interferon uh, system and reducing inflammation in the body uh, that is extremely important in this COVID type uh, symptoms of inflammation, pneumonia, really severe pneumonia that typically leads to lethal um, uh, outcomes, uh, mortality. 
So, and the caregivers, uh, people who are providing the frontliners, uh, the uh, physicians, nurses, and also uh, uh, family caregivers uh, should be doing s similar practices, centering themselves, giving themselves at least 11 uh, minutes a day to improve their self-regulation uh, sleep, and that would lead to improve uh, immune system protection against COVID. Uh, so, you know, interestingly, we didn't uh, plan on uh, uh, studying a COVID type of situation, but our findings are very relevant to the current situation. Um, so, we're also doing studies of Tai Chi, and uh, what we learned from Tai Chi, Tai Chi I'm studying in older adults with depression. And uh, it was some cogn cognitive impairment. In older adults, uh, depression frequently occurs with uh, medical comorbidities and cognitive symptoms. And so we find with Tai Chi similar kind of things as yoga. It's a multi-component uh, 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 mind-body intervention where it's movement, it's chanting, and uh, it's breathing. Um, it's massaging, uh, generating energy, uh, chi or kundalini. Uh, um, so they sort of have similar kind of um, components that would uh, result to s in similar uh, changes in stress response and in um, uh, changes in the brain. However, when it comes to the brain, what we learned from our yoga studies and tai chi studies uh, is that it's very important what components are present. If you're, like I explained on the brain, we see this multi-components uh, activating di different parts of the brain. If, if visualization is involved in Kriya, like in Kirtan Kriya, visualization of light, it would activate uh, occipital lobe um, and uh, have a neuro direct neuroplastic effect. So uh, the effect on the brain can be from uh, uh, effects on the stress, hormones, a reduction in cortisol, um, and the HPA access hormones that would result in um, a less toxic effect on hippocampus that would further improve emotional regulation and memory. Uh, but it uh, also is important what components are included in mind-body practices. Uh, for example, uh, we published a paper with my postdoc, uh, Bianca Acevedo, where we compared uh, mindfulness-based meditation, which is uh, uh, ba uh, rooted in Tibetan meditations and philosophy, <clears throat> and uh, uh, Buddhist meditation uh, versus yoga-based meditation. And we found that uh, mindfulness, both mindfulness and uh, yoga activate a self-referential, self-awareness self uh, network in the brain, uh, but yoga, if, because it involves movement and chanting and uh, different aspects, uh, uh, attention to the breath and mindfulness not necessarily in, in the same uh, uh, mode, uh, yoga activated uh, many more areas of the brain and uh, resulted in a more prominent or global uh, neuroplasticity in the brain. Um, uh, and so, but both practices can be used for the same um, purpose of stress reduction, centering, and self-regulation, including immune function. Um, with, with yoga and Tai Chi, adding to the brain stimulation via uh, movement included. Uh, so that would stimulate more areas of the brain. Even stimulation, uh, Kriya, this uh, finger movement, would stimulate uh, motor cortex of the brain. Uh, it's been demonstrated over and over again that over time, if you repeat the same task over time, it, it is an exercise for a lobe or a region in the brain. It would result in increased cortex uh, thickness uh, and other neuroplastic effects, in, in, including uh, neurochemical changes in the brain. So the more, the better. And also it results in self-awareness <clears throat> that allows people to uh, put all the challenges in a philosophical uh, perspective and avoid fear uh, by uh, producing this calming and centering effect. 
So I hope uh, my talk was informative. I'm looking forward to any kind of discussion, questions. I'm happy to answer.